One of the most important first steps in diagnosing any pancreatic cancer is to determine the stage of the disease. So in other words, working out what structures the tumour might involve and also whether it's spread beyond the pancreas. We use a number of different modalities to try and work this out and all of them contribute slightly different information. CT scans give us really good fine anatomical detail of both the pancreatic tumour and it also gives us a really good idea of places that it might have spread to. An MRI scanner uses powerful magnets and radio waves also to generate a three-dimensional image of the body. MRI is even better than CT in showing subtle soft tissue differences, so it can give us a bit more information about the local staging of the tumour. PET scans give us a colour map of areas in the body that are metabolically active like tumour, so it can show up areas in the body that CT and MRI might overlook. PET is especially helpful in assessing how well a tumour might have responded to therapy. Preparing for a CT scan is relatively straightforward. You'll need to fast for one hour, so that's no food for an hour, but you can continue drinking. In fact, we'll ask you to drink about a litre of water in the hour leading up to the scan. If you're due for an MRI scan, you'll need to fast for six hours prior to the procedure, so that's no food or drink. When preparing for a PET scan, you'll need to fast for six hours prior to the scan, so that's no food, no chewing gum, no mints, no smoking. It's okay to continue to drink water. For about 24 hours in the lead up to the scan, you'll be asked to have a special diet, so it's a low carbohydrate, low sugar diet. And also in the lead up, the 24 hour lead up to the scan, you'll be asked to refrain from any strenuous exercise. A CT scanner itself looks like a donut with a big hole in the middle. During a CT scan, you'll be injected with the contrast dye. And people describe some different sensations with the contrast dye, but most people will describe a warm flushing sensation that'll go through their body. And a lot of people will also describe a metallic taste in the back of their mouth. These are nothing to worry about and it's really expected. And then you go through the scanner, the donut, two or three times. And each of those times that you go through the donut, those are the x-rays being taken. So from go to woe between the cannula being put in, the scanning and saying goodbye, it's probably between five and 10 minutes. An MRI has some similarities to CT in that you're lying on your back on a flat bed. The difference between MRI and CT is rather than going through the scanner and coming out again, you go into the donut and you stay there for about 20 minutes. The radio waves that we use with MRI can be quite loud and it can feel like knocking or beeping sounds and for that reason, we'll give you a pair of headphones to block out the sounds and we'll also give you some music to listen to if you'd like. PET scans are the longest of the three and that's mainly because there's the preparation and the resting before the actual scanning. So after the radioactive material is injected, you have to rest for one or two hours and then the, the scanning itself takes 30 minutes. So you should probably allow for about four hours for a PET scan appointment. During a PET scan, you'll lie down on the scanner bed, just like on a CT, and it can be a little bit noisy, but you won't need headphones and most people cope with it just fine.